Hi, everyone, and welcome to the ICBA Daily News for September the 12th, 2023. I'm Jordan Bateman, happy to uh, give you the heads up here today on some more bad national economic news, what BC's red cap, red cap easy for me to say, actually means, and just how much the Trudeau government's energy plans are going to jack up housing construction costs. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. For links to the sources, as always, visit icbaindependent.ca. Of course, we can't post media links here because of the Trudeau government's foolish online news act which we're going to keep mentioning until this gets resolved. Either they uh, figure this out or a new government comes in and fixes this uh, dumb policy. All right, first piece of news, Desjardins Economics. They're out with a new report today showing, frankly, what the Business Council of British Columbia has been waving the red alert flag for quite a while on, that Canada's economy only looks like it's growing because we're adding more people. But when you look at the per-person economic indicators like GDP, productivity, plus a business investment level that Desjardins calls, quote, alarming, things are far more grim. It's almost like the politicians in charge have some sort of vested interest in spending numbers that seem better to the media and to the public. Of course they do. But Canadians already, I think, know and are feeling the truth on the ground. Our prosperity is slipping away. Uh, there is now a, a growing pessimism that our children will be better off than our generation was. This is bad news for the Canadian economy and we need to change the policies in order to attract more investment, uh, grow the uh, economic GDP, uh, and, uh, and just increase the level of prosperity across this country. News item number two, it's uh, today's daily reminder, I guess, of how complex the housing crisis has become. Uh, British Columbia government, uh, the David Eby government announced yesterday that they're gonna cap the maximum allowable rent increase at 3.5% this year. That's well below the rate of inflation. Now, that sounds like great news to most renters, um, because you know, you're not paying 7% more, 8% more, 3.5% um, might be a little bit more doable. And obviously that is important with the cost of living as high as it is and rent as high as they are. But we need to be aware. Everything we do in housing, you know, everything the government does in housing, whatever it meddles in housing, it does cause both positive and negative effects. And the negative effects here really are twofold. First, it means even higher rates for new tenants as landlords will uh, need to make up their losses when someone moves. So think about this, you know, you may have a rental agreement and you may be capped at a, you know, three and a half percent increase. If you move, um, the new person coming in, they, their rent will increase by far more than three and a half percent on your unit. Now, what does that do as far as incentives for, um, you know, landlords to kind of nudge folks on to new, uh, new housing? Uh, you know, it certainly does uh, uh, create a market incentive to uh, move people on and bring in new tenants. The second thing is, this is, you know, far more concerning long-term, it reduces the financial return and incentive for people to build more rental housing. What's the point of building rental housing? It's expensive to put all this stuff in the ground. And then if your uh, ability to raise uh, rents um, is actually lower than the rate of inflation, you're gonna be losing money every year, losing ground every year on those uh, housing units. So um, this, you know, is another sign of, um, or another nudge to people, uh, to builders, like maybe rental housing isn't what you wanna do at a time where we desperately need more. And then finally, news item number three, the Trudeau government bringing in even more strict energy efficiency rules for new homes. And the Fraser Institute got out its calculator to try to figure out how much it will cost home builders and owners. And in the midst of an affordability crisis unparalleled in Canadian history, these new rules alone will increase the cost of a new home by $55,000. And all of that to cut less than 1% of Canadian greenhouse gas emissions, which in, in itself, you know, Canadian greenhouse gas emissions is a tiny fraction of the world's overall emissions. So you're, you're cutting a fraction of a fraction um, and costing everyone $55,000 on a new home. Um, the, the other thing that the Fraser Institute calculates is that this will actually reduce economic activity in Canada by almost 2%. You know, like the juice just isn't worth the squeeze on this one. And hopefully the prime minister will listen. It seems unlikely given how he's doubling down on these kind of measures, but you can't have affordability uh, on, or talk affordability in one hand on housing. And then the other hand be increasing uh, fees, red tape, regulations, all of these things constantly as government seems to do. So that's our news for today. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, and you can always email me at jordan at icba.ca, especially if you have something you think that I should be talking about tomorrow. I appreciate the uh, folks watching and have a great day.